Hi, Dr. Mindy Curry here. I'm a naturopath in the Portland area. Um, and I'm here to talk to you today about elderberries, Sambucus nigra, the black elderberry in specific. You can see it back here behind me. It's a lovely tree. And right now, the, <clears throat> the berries are in season. This is the time to pick them when they're ripe, fully ripe. Don't pick them when they're green. Also, this tree has uh, some cyanogenic um, compounds, so that means it's cyanide inducing. You don't want to be eating any of these leaves or the bark or the roots. You just want to leave that alone and just focus on the berries or possibly the flowers earlier in the season. Here we are, it's the uh, beginning of September, and this is towards the end of the season for these, but for this tree it's just perfect. So we're going to gather some of these and we're going to take them home. We're going to make some medicine out of them. So I've got a pretty big batch here. We'll take these back to the kitchen. Talk to, them a little, talk to you a little bit more about their uses and how to make some delicious syrup. So the elder plants, they're a bush or a tree, are also pretty easy to grow. Um, this one I've got growing out in my herb garden I picked up last year and this year it's already done its berries and they're gone. So we're going to go somewhere else to harvest these but that's a beautiful little Sambucus nigra just beginning its life. It's going to love it here, especially once I get it in the ground. It will really take off. And here we are back at the kitchen. You can see I've got a couple clusters of elderberries here to demonstrate for you how, how beautiful they are. They've got a a very white um, coating, it's natural yeasts right there. If you're into making any kind of brewing, that would do it. Um, you can see the leaves here. They're one stem with several leaves coming off the edge, serrated edges. Um, remember, you want the black elderberry, not the red elderberry, because that can have some cyanide-inducing compounds in it. Basically, we're going to put these in a big pot. We're going to rinse that and we're going to process it. We're going to take all the leaves off. We're going to take the stems off and just get the berries. And with that, we're going to make a nice uh, medicinal syrup out of that. Aren't they gorgeous? These are not sweet, right, fresh, and raw off the tree. They're, uh, they're very dark colored juice. We've got big seeds in there. You really do got to do a bit of processing. So the elderberry's history is pretty long. It was used both by European herbal traditions and Native American herbal traditions. The Romans used it. Uh, generally, it has been known as a cure-all throughout history and has even been called the medicine chest of country people. This is elderberry is Sambucus nigra. And like I said, use only the fully ripe berries or possibly the flowers early in the spring. Elderberries are particularly known for their use in the prevention and treatment of typical winter illnesses such as the common cold, flus, sore throats, bronchitis. They possess plant chemicals that are antiviral, antimicrobial, anti-inflammatory, and they're packed with vitamins and minerals especially vitamin C and other antioxidants. They have flavonoids, which have been shown to bind human and avian influenza viruses. Um, elderberries are generally an excellent immune system booster, partially in part to their high anthrocyanidin compounds. And these are compounds known to um, be immune stimulants. Elderberries often have, also have anti-inflammatory and antioxidant properties, which make it a good choice in sinus infections, especially when combined with other sinus herbs, uh, such as a really nice rosemary steam inhalation. 
Elderberries have been used by diabetics to lower blood sugar. Um, hint, don't use the syrup for this. Um, studies do suggest they have insulin-like properties, boost insulin release, and may even lower insulin resistance. Elderberries are also used as natural diuretics and mild laxatives. They're bioflavonoids, anthocyanidins, antioxidants, vitamin A content also help them, make them helpful for boosting your skin strength and condition. They've been used uh, in cosmetics for these benefits. Elderberries have often also have lately also been studied for anti-cancer and cancer prevention properties. They also, also may help improve cardiovascular health by acting to normalize both cholesterol and blood pressure. It's just really a great thing also to take with you when traveling um, overseas or if you're taking any long flights um, or even if you're just going to go to the hospital and spend some time at a hospital and you don't want to catch whatever's going around around you. Take some elderberries as kind of a preventative just to boost your immune system. Elderberries are also great for allergy relief and hay fever since they reduce inflammation and regulate the immune system. Now we're going to get back to processing these guys and I'll show you how to make a nice syrup. Hey, I've got you here at my sink and now we're going to clean up these elderberries. We're going to want to uh, take off these leaves and these stems. These leaves are no good, very bad. Um, stems, well, you can get little chunks of them in there, but you really don't want to have a lot of stems in your syrup, so might as well just get the berries. Now these berries have a pretty big seed in them, so we're going to have to, after we juice them, strain them from the seed. Now this is going to take a while, so just kick back and enjoy the process. So here we have it, a whole big pot full of elderberries that have been mostly removed from their stems. Little tiny stems are not going to be too much of a worry because we are going to press these at the end. Um, elderberries can be used to make juice, jams, chutneys, pies, elderberry wine, but the most popular use I'd say right now is elderberry syrup. And uh, so with fresh elderberries like this, I've, I've seen some recipes say one cup fresh berries to one cup honey. Um, I do it more by taste. I just uh, reek. Uh, I make the juice, put in the honey, see if it's sweet enough. I like mine a bit tart. Um, if you're using dry berries, say a half cup dry berries to a cup of honey, um, want to add lemon, clove, cinnamon, ginger, um, possibly other flavors orange peel would be delightful. Um, once you've got your syrup made, you're going to want about a tablespoon per day for prevention. Um, it's great on plain yogurt and smoothies, teas, added to a seltzer, topped on ice cream or oatmeal, or in waffles in place of some kind of artificial high fructose based syrup. Used to sweeten berry pies, cobblers, crisps. Now the spring flowers can also be harvested um, whole and these can be dipped into a thin batter of egg and flour and fried and while that's no longer a health food it is truly delicious especially when topped with some of that elderberry syrup that we're going to make. 
You can also dry these elderberries or freeze them for use in the winter months. Do not use, do not eat these raw. You'll get pretty bad GI upset. Your tummy will not be happy. So these must be cooked. Remember, don't use the leaves. Just use the berries, possibly the flowers, and always cook them. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put some water in here. Mm, not quite to the top of the berries, but pretty close. Just give it a lot of good water. And then we'll boil that, reduce it down a little bit again, and add some flavor. Let's take that over to the <coughs> stove now. Okay, let's get these guys simmering. Ooh. This is going to take a while. Let's come back. And we've got it boiling, so we're going to reduce the heat a little bit. <laughs> and uh, I'm going to add a couple cinnamon sticks and a few cloves. I'm going to mash all that together. Well, we'll let this uh, simmer and reduce for a little while. Come back to it. It's a little easier to do a bit of mashing. Okay, and we can see this has boiled down and thickened up quite a bit, so I'm going to take this and turn off the flame. We're going to let that cool down um, a ways until it's warm, and then we're going to strain that through the, the fruit press over here. Now I use a nut milk bag that goes in over here and this goes in there and spinny spinny and everything comes out the bottom <laughs> um, so we'll show you how that works in a little while once this is cooled down okay now we're gonna get to straining out our elderberry juice and then we'll finish up making the syrup So I've pulped these elderberries. Now I'm going to put them in the fruit press. It's kind of a big mess, but easier than the alternative. Got this spoon in here because I don't have a proper cork. But as you can see it works pretty well. Actually, it looks like I can add a lot more already. Let's stop that up.
Okay, I've got the elderberry juice that's been squeezed back in the pot, bringing it back up to boil. And I'm going to add in about the juice with about a lemon. And it's just the organic lemon juice, pre-squeezed. And then just start pouring in honey. I'm well, probably going to need maybe three more of these jars for this amount of liquid. Make a nice syrup. I like it to be somewhat thin, not too thick. I'm not out there for the sugar. I'm out there for the elderberries. So I'm going to put some more in there and we'll get this heated up and finish this syrup up. Okay, we've got this thing up to boil. So now I'm just going to fill my jar. This jar I'm going to cool down. I'm going to let cool. And I'm probably going to put this in the freezer for later on in the cold season. So I'm going to leave a good finger full there. I'm going to make sure this is totally cold before I put it in the freezer too. That lid on nice and tight. And that is an elderberry syrup. For your influenza pleasure. Okay, and there we have it. That's how you make an elderberry syrup with honey. This is a delightful syrup for preventing colds and flus and generally immune boosting. And if you got a cold or flu, it's actually great for soothing those symptoms as well. You want to take one tablespoon a day for prevention for adults and probably one to two tablespoons every three to four hours, up to about four doses a day um, if you actually have a flu. Uh, much past that and you're risking a little bit of diarrhea. but. In the case, it's a delicious syrup that can be used in so many other culinary purposes as well, besides just a delightful medicine and immune booster. I hope you have enjoyed this video and you're inspired to go out and make some elderberry syrup for yourself. Have a great day. So now that I've shown you how to make some wonderful medicine, I want to remind you that it's very important to go see a doctor or a naturopath or at least an herbalist before starting any herbals for your conditions. For one thing, you may not really understand what your diagnosis is. You may think it's just a little bit of this and that that can be treated with some plants when it's really something serious and you're missing it and it could, could be fatal. Um, also, there are interactions between herbs and drugs and there's also contraindications between some of the problems you may be having and the herbs you may think you need. <laughs> so don't start taking anything willy-nilly unless you're sure what's going on. And to be sure, come see a naturopath like me. I'm in Portland, Oregon. I do house calls in the greater Portland area. And I also have an office in Milwaukee.